Hello, my name is Bart Brecka, and today I'm prepared to share with you some basic modeling techniques using ICX Creo 3. And uh, before, I, before I begin, however, I'd like to just mention that a lot of engineers don't believe ISDX is for them because they can't make parent-child, parametric parent-child constraint changes to the model. Well, I'm going to show how, in hindsight, one can go back and do that. Before I begin, I would like to talk first about Design Engine itself as a school. We maintain a blog where we post articles about design and engineering. There's a Elon Musk article here that you have to read uh, where the Chinese are, are basically knocking off Tesla. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on uh, training classes, which takes us to the Design Engine uh, School website. And I've already logged in to the student login here. And uh, I've got that open already, and I've, I've actually logged in to the ISDX Level 6 class. Our, probably our most popular class is the one-week surfacing class, which, which, is, which is what these testimonials uh, are referring to. So uh, what I've done is I've uh, prepared, I've downloaded this, this hood scoop, and I'm going to bring it over into my model. And... Uh, into my model space and just kind of exercise the geometry and share with you kind of how it's built. This is a very design engine-esque modeling technique where we uh, utilize a lattice structure or a bounding box to control the geometry. So you can see I built the entire geometry in one ISDX feature. I'll use edit definition and basically modify something here and, and show you that we can update, get the updates in real time. Some engineers get a little upset about that because they want to be able to parametrically control that information. So what I'm going to do is check out of this geometry, go to insert here before that, uh, that, that style feature exists, and in hindsight, give myself some parametric geometry to adhere to. This is a very design engine-esque thing to do, and I wanted to just kind of illustrate some of the techniques that we utilize to make the, the training more interesting and more uh, workflow oriented, if you will. So I'll go ahead and, and parametrically define this shape. I'll, uh, I'll dimension it to the roof of the geometry to uh, be a little bit different here. And I'll go ahead and get rid of that uh, radius value. So there's a parametric geometry. If you'll notice, I made it aligned to the, to the, to the plane as if that's going to get mirrored about or something like that. So I'll just go ahead and, and uh, then, then edit definition on the style feature to uh, basically, and I'm going to double click on that curve, which is the same as pick, picking curve edit. And I uh, move that around and I'm going to hold my shift key and snap it to the curve itself. Right hold down on that little green handle there and tell that to go tangent to the geometry. I can switch it one way or the other. It's not exactly the curve, but once I check out of it, I can, I can right-click through here and grab that parametric geometry now and parametrically update the ISDX feature. Okay, so there is, there is something we, some things that we can do in hindsight to prepare the model to behave more interestingly. In a, in a subsequent video, I'll do the same thing using the freestyle tool, the sub-D editing. My experience with Design Engine has been absolutely fantastic. You know, from day one, we just got rolling right into the basics and the foundations. And from there, you know, we were able to take our skills and all that we knew and apply um, some of the small things that we didn't know about. A lot of like understanding how the programmers, um, you know, design the software itself. And that allowed us to really uh, take our control of surfaces um, and apply them to exactly what we need to do. So at Design Engine, I was lucky enough to spend the entire week with Bart Brecka, um, one of the founders, and he's just been a blast. You know, he not only explains how the tools work and you know how you can apply them to your job, but he also gives you a little bit of background at each step of the way as to you know, the history of 
how you know the CAD software got to where it is, and that helps you really get a full understanding of where you are and what you have to do and what to expect in the future. In the second part of the video, I'm going to share another technique on how to make something parametric inside of ISDX. What I'll do is I'll edit definition on the style feature. Double click on this outer curve. That's the same, again, as going to curve edit inside of ISDX and clicking on the curve. Once I click on the end point, the, uh, the end the end point, what you probably can't see because of the screen is that there's a green handle uh, right there. Let me show you what that is. What I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll layer off the uh, parametric curves here, these bounding boxes. Then I'll edit definition back into the uh, style feature. Double click. Now you can start to see that green handle. So what I'm going to do is go go here to this dialog box and click on this this radio button and uh, when I check out of this geometry and double and, and and edit the actual style feature look I have a parametric value that measures the length of that green handle next I'll explain what that green handle is doing and what it's actually pointing to so I'm going to type in 33 and then hit control G and you can see in effect I'm, I'm managing the green the green handle with a parametric number. That's uh, been a functionality in ISDX since early on. In this portion I'm going to remodel the geometry so I'm just going to left click on the style feature and hit the delete button. I'll turn on my datum planes and I'll also turn back on my curves. So to, to build something from scratch with ISDX, notice I have these, these, these lattice structures and I also have this parametric curve that I put on previously. I'll go ahead and just jump into ISDX, create the style feature, and uh, notice I've got this base plane here. That base plane is the active plane and I can, I can in, in mid stride here switch it to a different uh, plane. I'm just going to left click twice. I do that to minimize the amount of geometry that, that get the complexity of, the, of the, the geometry. I'll use my curve edit function now and I'm going to use my shift key to snap it to the lattice structure. I let go of the shift key. I'm going to do it again. Now I hit the shift key and just get it to snap and let go. Once I've done that the magnet is basically adheres to the geometry for good. I'm going to go ahead and, and right hold down about halfway down that geometry and I can turn that to tangent. I know that was off the page there. So I'll left click again, um, left click on the end point, right hold down about halfway down, and I'm releasing on tangent. So I'll pull that at the end. I'll pull this one all the way to the end. Now I'm just going to do that uh, twice more. Before I do the, the next one, however, I want to turn my datums on so I can, I can switch my active plane. This is my active plane setting, but I'm going to leave it set inadvertently to the bottom one. And uh, just to share with you that I can I can switch it up here. They've, they've given me access to this user interface. It'd be really neat if I had access to it under my, underneath, my, underneath my right mouse button as well, which it is. So I'm going to go ahead and just left click twice, middle click, middle click one more time, which gets me out of the user interface. And then I can just double click on that curve, which, which is the same as going to edit, edit curve. I'm going to use my shift key to snap it to the top, snap it to the side. I let go of the shift key to see it that in fact adheres. I right hold down about halfway down that handle and release on tangent, pull it to the bottom. So I'm going to grab the end and pull it to the bottom. And then I can change the length of the green handle. Left click on the end, right hold down. I can, uh, I'll do the same thing to this one, release on tangent, and uh, on this one I'll leave it, uh, leave it about so. The next curve I want to build is going to be a free curve between this uh, parametric geometry and this geometry. And uh, I'm in the free curve setting, so I'm going to hold my shift key down, pick it, pick the other one holding the shift key down as well, middle click 
which gets me out of the tool. I could have hit one more middle click as well. And then I'm going to go to my Curve Edit tool. Um, I'll left click, right hold down about halfway. And I'm going to force this one perpendicular to that data plane. See how I got the data plane and not the bounding box? Left click again. Left click on the end point. Right hold down about, you can barely see that green handle. Right hold down, normal to the plane. And now I can um, basically edit that geometry. So the ISDX surface itself is next. So notice I still have this one selected. I'm just going to hit the ISDX surface function. And then now I get to hold my control key down. It doesn't matter how I build the geometry. It doesn't, it doesn't necessarily need to go one side is, is like the other side like we do in Pro Surface. This, surf, this surface goes uh, one, two, three and four, kind of like Alias, or what this software evolved from, which was called CDRS.